REACH, Understanding Chemical Regulation for Sable World. The REACH regulation was introduced in 2007 to improve the protection of human health and the environment by regulating the use of chemicals in the European Union. Any chemical imported to the EU country must be complied with REACH regulations, including those used in everyday items like cleaning products or furniture. Companies must manage and demonstrate the risk associated with their products, containing chemicals and prove how they can be safely used, as well as communicate risk management measures to downstream which includes registration, evaluation, authorization and restriction procedures with the aim to controlling and managing the risk of hazardous chemicals. Let's tune into Nadine, our compliance officer at The Atomic, as she explains this topic. Hi there. In this lesson, let's dive into the regulations of chemicals. REACH was put into play to improve the previous EU legislative framework for chemicals and also to improve the protection of human health and the environment. In essence, any chemical which you import to any country in the EU needs to comply with the REACH regulation. The chemicals could be, for example, liquid or gas form and may be active or not active. This regulation doesn't only apply to huge industrial processes, but also applies to chemicals which are used in your daily lives, like cleaning products or paints, or items such as clothing or furniture, for example. There is a lot of information which pertains to the REACH regulation, but for the scope of this course, we'll touch on the basics which you might need to know. So, what is the significance of the regulation? How does it apply? Well, to comply with this regulation, companies need to check and manage the risks involved with their products that contain or use chemicals. They then need to demonstrate to the European Chemicals Agency, also known as ECHA, that they understand the risks. They will also be required to prove how the product can be safely used while also communicating the risk management measures to the downstream users. Chemicals which are already regulated by other legislations like medicines or radioactive substances may be partially or completely exempted from the REACH requirements. Now, let's look at the various processes under REACH. The registration process applies to chemicals which are imported at greater amounts than one ton a year. That's from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. You'll need to aggregate the volume of your substance as a substance on its own, in a mixture or in a product. These substances will need to be registered if it is not already registered by a different entity. There may be cases where some of the ingredients of your substance might still be under review. Like for example, with our client MyAirShield, one of the active components in their product was still under review when we were trying to register the product. We therefore had to register the product in each member state individually. In order to register, you'll be required to prepare a registration dossier. This is composed of a technical dossier and where applicable a chemical safety report if you manufacture or import more than 10 tonnes of substances per year. How much would this cost? REACH calculates the price based on two main factors. Firstly, how many tonnes are sold in the EU per calendar year? And secondly, the turnover of the company that is registering the substance. The more tonnage and the larger the income of the company trying to register the substance, the more costly the registrations will be. Next, let's look at the evaluation process. This process covers two areas. One, dossier evaluation, and two, substance evaluation. The dossier evaluation is where ECHA checks that the registration dossier contain information of chemicals required by the legislation applicable to your product. The substance evaluation involves member states which evaluate the substance after they have identified specific concerns. So the evaluation phase involves an assessment phase where your testing proposals are examined if you are looking to do tests. The whole point of this evaluation phase is to avoid unnecessary animal testing, especially when involving vertebrate animals. You'll need to wait for ECHA's decision before you can perform any testing. Now let's look at the authorization process. Okay, so this process is to ensure that the risk related to substances of very high concern, also called SVHCSs, are correctly controlled through their life cycle. 
A substance can be classified as an SVHC if one or various hazardous components are identified in it. These hazardous components are 1. Substances that meet the criteria for classification as carcinogenic, mutagenic or toxic for reproduction, also called CMRs. 2. Substances which are persistent, bioaccumulative and toxic or PPD, or very persistent and very bioaccumulative, VPVB, according to REACH Annex 13. And 3. Substances on a case-by-case -case basis that cause any equivalent level of concern as a CMR or PBT, VP, VB substance. If a substance is identified as an SVHC, it is included in what is called the candidate list. There are some immediate obligations for suppliers whose substances are on this list. For starters, they will have to supply a safety data sheet and advise on safe use. They'll also need to respond to any consumer request within 45 days. Another obligation is that they must notify ICA if the article they produce contains the SVHC in quantities above one ton per year. It's typically expected that chemicals which are included on the candidate list would eventually be included in the authorization list. If a substance is placed on the authorization list, it can no longer be used in the EU unless otherwise authorized by the European Commission. Now finally, let's talk about the restriction procedure of the REACH regulation. So after considering everything I've just mentioned, if the authorities decided that the risks associated with a particular substance cannot be controlled or managed, then the authorities can ban or restrict the use of the substance in different ways and perhaps substitute it with something less dangerous in future. According to the ECHO website, the restriction process can be started in one of five ways. 1. A member state can start to prepare a restriction dossier. 2. The European Commission can ask ECHO to prepare a restriction dossier. 3. ECHO can prepare a restriction dossier on its own initiative for substances on the authorization list, which it sees as not being adequately controlled when used in articles. 4. If urgent action is needed under REACH, there is a safeguard clause that allows member states to take provisional measures to protect human health and the environment. In this case, the member state can prepare a restriction dossier if the Commission authorises these measures. And five, the European Commission can propose a restriction for a carcinogenic, mutagenic or reprotoxic CMR substance on its own, in mixtures or in articles without involving ECHA. So what type of companies may be affected by REACH? Well, more companies than you think. If you're a manufacturer of a chemical, then you most likely have some responsibilities under REACH. But even if you are a downstream user who uses chemicals in your industrial or professional processes, it's likely that REACH should be on your radar. Remember though, if you are a company outside the EU, you are not bound by any obligations under REACH. This responsibility and obligation will fall on the distributor established in the EU, or what is called the only representative of a non-EU manufacturer established in the EU. Even if you are an external company which simply moves the goods in and around the customs territories of EU, the obligations do not fall on you, they fall on the EU-based manufacturer. Now you might be asking yourself, what exactly is an only representative? Well, according to Article 8 of REACH regulations, the following applies to only representatives, also called OR. 1. They are an entity or natural person who is established inside the EU. A natural person is someone who is not an association, partnership, business, corporation, non-profit corporation or other business entity. 2. They should have sufficient knowledge or background in the practical handling of substances and information related to them. Three, they should be appointed by a mutual agreement with a manufacturer, formulator or article producer established outside the European Economic Area or the EEA. Four, they are responsible for complying with the legal requirements for the distributors under REACH. As a non-EU company, you have three options in choosing your only representative. Your first option is to set up a legal entity based in the EU that will act as your OR. As I've previously mentioned, this is what we did with my Airshield when we established an entity in the Netherlands. 
The company needs to be a real company, not just a postal address. So the authority should be able to speak to a representative directly. Your second option is to appoint your distributor as your OR. If you're a manufacturer who doesn't want to disclose your proprietary and confidential information, this option is a bit risky. You might find that mixing business with compliance will be you might find that mixing business with compliance will bring a different nature to your collaboration. Thirdly, you could appoint a regulatory consulting firm as your OR. In this way, you'll be able to trust an unbiased and impartial company with expertise in reach compliance. Okay, so let's recap. We touched on the various processes of the REACH regulations. These were the evaluation, the authorization, and the restrictions of chemicals. We spoke about which companies might be affected by REACH regulations. And then we also spoke a bit about what an only representative is and what your options are if you are a non-EU manufacturer. That's it for the basics of REACH. Let's move on to the next lesson.